Hi, Margo with Event Answer here to show you how I tier and texture a food and beverage table for a party. The best way to add visual interest to a table is to add height and add texture to that table. It'll make it more visually interesting. And when we eat, we eat with our eyes first. So today I'm gonna to show you how I walk step-by-step step putting a table together. And that starts with first visualizing what do we want this table to accomplish and how do we want people to move through the table. So for me, um, I have a cake. I'm gonna to plan to have some treats and some hors d'oeuvres on trays, and then I'll have a beverage dispenser with cups on this. So something I need to think about is I want people to go left to right across my table, and I want the cake to be the center point. So it's gonna be the highest point on the table. And then I'm gonna work my way down with a little bit of height, and then I'll come back up on the end with the beverage dispenser, which has a lot more height than some of my lower trays. So visually, we're gonna start high, move to the center, and come up just a bit on the end. We also wanna think about the technical aspects of putting together a table. Where are the plates and the, and the silverware gonna go? How will people serve themselves or be served? Um, do they have everything they need on this table? So can they pick up their plate and napkin and fork move down the table, pick up a cup, and then get their beverage. Um, so we need to think through those things first. So with my plan, we're gonna start on this side, everyone's gonna move left to right, pick up the items they need, and then we're ready to start making our tiering and texturing. Today's table is a six foot fold up table, and I've already laid the base linens on this. So there's an ivory linen with um, a textured, actually it's a curtain, laid over the top of it and that gives us a subtle texture and something to build off of. I prefer a floor length um, but depending on how formal your event is you can have it be shorter or longer but all the way to the floor as long as people aren't trying to put their knees under it and sit at it floor is the way to go. So once your base linen is already on here the next step is to figure out how you want to create height. There's lots of ways you can go about this but the best way is to use cardboard boxes. We get lots of these, um, they're easy to get a hold of, they're sturdy, um, but you can use anything. It could be a snap tub, it could be a wood crate. The main thing is they need to be strong enough to hold what you're gonna put on top of it, and they need to not be slick. Um, you notice I don't have any glass pieces here because um, I don't want anything to slip. Um, so everything here is cardboard, and if I'm stacking multiple boxes on top of each other, I want to secure those into place. I'm gonna use a little bit of tape so that they won't move once we've already got the fabric and everything on top of it. So make sure whatever you use for structure is strong, it's not gonna collapse, and it's not slick. So I've just got a, an assortment of boxes here. So like I said, I'm gonna start tall on this side. So I have this really large box. Um, but it's not quite the height that I want. So I have this really skinny box here and I'm gonna set it down first and then place the larger box on top of it. Now it's okay if there's a bit of a void. Um, you're not gonna see that once we drape the fabric over it. So I'm not concerned about that. My table is also gonna be front view only. I've got it pushed up against the wall. I'm not concerned about anyone seeing the back side of this table. Um, so I'm not afraid to push things clear to the back and that gives us more room at the front for lower objects. So I have this large box first and that's what the cake is going to go on. And then I wanna leave a spot here for plates and napkins and silverware, but I have a small plate that I'm gonna put some candies or something on. So I'm gonna use this tiny box and set it in front. And that's gonna give me some visual presence, starting with larger and working down lower. And once we get the fabric, that's gonna drape beautifully down the front. I also have these two boxes that are the same size. So I'm gonna set them in the center of the table and get the wrinkles out of the tablecloth. And then I have a scrap piece of wood here and I'm gonna set that on top here and this will create a large shelf across the center of the table. Now, you could also do this with a piece of glass so you would only drape the box part and then you can have a really beautiful piece of plexi or glass across the top and give you a shelf. So you can display things on top 
and underneath and that would give you more space and visually it's very stunning. Um, I don't have a piece of glass today so we're just going to be using this wood. Uh, but this is going to give us a really nice long place to put multiple plates, multiple desserts, um, and a long space in front of it. So once we have the boxes where we want them and they've been secured with tape, the next step is to start draping them with fabric. And this can be anything. It could be extra linens, it could be in a, uh, the same color as our base linens, or it could be in a coordinating color to make these stand out. I picked a coordinating color for today, um, but those could be spare linens, they could be curtains like what I'm using here today, or you could even go to your local hobby and craft store and pick up coordinating fabrics and just have them cut swatches of fabric big enough to cover this, and that would work just as well. A friend on Facebook, Stephanie, asked me, how do you know how big of a piece of fabric do you need to cover this? Does it need to drape all the way down? Does it need to be larger than our base linens? My answer would be no. The main thing is you only want the fabric long enough to cover what you need. You don't want to have your linens so large that they cover this and they go down because that weight at the bottom is going to pull the fabric and pull out all of the lovely folds that we're going to put into this. So my answer to you, Stephanie, is to pick a linen that is just big enough to cover what you need. Um, so, and anything that's a little larger, we can always fold under what's extra. So get a little bigger, um, but you don't need a full size linen per se to cover this. So I'm using a green coordinating linen here. Um, I have a tropical theme that's gonna go on, so I've picked this mainly for its fabric texture as well as its color. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just open it up, make sure I get the seam side down, because uh, we don't want that to be visible. And I'm just gonna start draping it. Now remember, my back isn't going to be seen, so I don't care what it looks like. If you will have a double-sided table, make sure you're draping both sides beautifully. So I'm going to take this fabric and I'm just going to start by loosely getting it where I want it. I know I want it to cover the big box and the little box and I have a second linen that will cover that shelf. So I'm not concerned about that shelf yet. But I want to cover all of the cardboard and I don't want this tail to stick out the front. I want it to come back and I'm going to hide it down here. And once everything is covered, the next step is to start adding beautiful folds to the fabric. So, like I said, I have a cake on top here, so I want it to be flat. And then I'm just going to start taking the edges and rolling them under. And this will create just a beautiful poof in the fabric. You want it to touch the table. It can drape a little bit, but we don't want any seams or ends to stick out. We want all of it to be very soft and to give the feeling of movement on the table. So I'm gonna roll this under just a tad here. And I've got a lot of extra fabric here. So I'm gonna take that and start rolling it under and tucking it back away so I don't have all of that bulk. And there we go. So we'll, and we'll just continue to play with this until even the end where we're putting plates on it. So it looks just how we want it. So the next one here, and these are kind of narrow, so, but that's fine for what I'm doing. I'm just using narrow pieces, but if this were deeper, or if you had a round table, you might want more square or round linens versus mine, which are probably less than three feet across here. So use what fits what your desire is. I'm gonna tuck that extra tail behind and drape this down the front. I want this to be a tad longer in the front so I can fold that under and give us a nice front seam. Now I have a lot of tail here and I'm going to tuck it around. I have something going back here so I'm going to leave this fabric and I'll deal with it in a moment. Right now I'm just trying to tuck in all the extra bits and create a lovely fold. Now this looks a little thick here so I'm going to tuck this back. And just continue to play with it until you're satisfied with the look of the fabric. Once our base color is down, then it's time to add coordinating colors and textures to the table. Now you could absolutely stop here and this would be more than plenty, but I'm going to add a little bit more texture. I have this sheer curtain that has some woven designs into it. I'm just going to drape it across my center section here and I want it to come across at an angle. 
And this I do want to drape across the front, so I'm going to pull it across and I'll leave a little fabric here because there will be something here that will hold it down in a moment. I'm going to drape this across, get it under the green here, and pull it across my table. And that will give us just a lovely flow and guide people up towards this center section here. So just play with the additional textural pieces until you're happy with that. I also want to add that tearing and texturing can be done with other objects, objects you do want to be seen. So anything that would be glass or a coordinating wood piece, I actually have this bright blue basket actually that I'm going to turn upside down and put it on the far end here. And that's what I'll set my beverage dispenser on. So there's lots of coordinating pieces you can add to this that will also give you height, but it doesn't have to be a soft material. They can be hard in coordinating colors and that will look great. So now I'm gonna start adding some other decorations. So this is my dish that I would like to put candies in. And I'm gonna set it there. It matches my basket across the way. I also have some faux palm leaves here. And I'm just going to start scattering across. Again, this adds to the texture. It adds to the design. And we're just going to start laying these in wherever we want. Just a little bit more. In fact, that could even go up here. And would drape beautifully coming down over the cross, over the front there. And there we go. And so now it's time to finally start adding our main pieces. Here's my cake. And I'm just going to set it up here. Now I love that there's a couple extra inches around the edge of the cake to the edge of the box. This allows for um, extra utensils like the cake cutter and extra knives to be set here. If you have extra decorations, say this was for a birthday party, you could put cake toppers on this or coordinating pieces up here that would also accentuate the cake and you have the room to do that with that larger box. Next, I have my beverage dispenser. Now, like I said earlier, I have this coordinating basket here. Now, this beverage dispenser usually has a clear base, but because I have the basket, it's going to raise it up high enough that people will be able to put their cups under it without needing to use that clear base. So once that is in place, we can start adding the decorative touches to this table. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Adding visual interest to a food and beverage table can really create a focal point for your next event. So I hope you can take some of these tips and tricks with you for your next event and find them helpful. This video is actually a part of my Event Planning 101 series. So check out over here the playlist called Event Planning 101 for other beginner steps and technical aspects of putting on an event. Check out the videos over here. I've got the playlist up here as well as other videos that you might find helpful. Be sure to also hit the subscribe button below and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!